first thing is always negative. That voice is negative. And it's just. And it's an audible and it, voice you're hearing in your head. I'm hearing it in my head. And I'm talking to myself. Like, and again, it's, it's, you know, how the hell did we get here? Mm-hmm. And that voice is talking to me like, damn, Darren, why'd you, why did you do this? Mm-hmm. Or how could you allow this to happen? So that, that voice is definitely talking to me. Um, and it sucks, man. Because I'm, I'm drilling myself down. Like, yeah. I'm knocking myself all the way down with that inner voice. And trust me, I've, I've had so many times where I'm like, man, try to get out of it. Try to get out of that, that, that negative voice. But I think that's the process that you have to go through. Mm-hmm. So... Before we talked about this episode and what we we're going to talk about today, had you guys ever heard of the term psychological distancing? You just said psychological, and you know damn well we haven't. <laughs> 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 Sounds like something you'd find in a book somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. So I never heard the phrase. No. I had never heard the phrase either. Mm-hmm. I, I was schooled up on this phrase. Mm-hmm. What do you think, if you just had to take a guess, psychological distancing what would you think that that would mean and maybe you already know but think back to before, before you before i before i <laughs> before we had the conversation guess, what yeah. would you guess that that term meant psychological distancing i i mean i would say probably like just removing yourself from situations yeah. like and from people yeah right so any psychological warfare confusion whatever just remove yeah. yourself from it yeah, yeah just t- totally look, you just said a distancing just distance yeah. yourself away from yeah. whatever it is that <laughs> you look i mean something like <laughs> i mean like stressful situations how do you you know basically how right. do you distance yourself from yeah, yeah yeah no I, I agree that's probably what i would have said yeah. uh and, and that's basically what it is it's it's the technique where we step away quote unquote step away from a situation or position to allow us to gain perspective. So we now, have, when you say though, when you say step away, is it step away from your own situation or step away from any situation? It, I mean, the, the discussion today is more about how you step away from your own situation. Okay. I would imagine it could work in other situations. However, as we'll find, mm-hmm. typically you don't need to necessarily step away when it's somebody else's issue. You're already Distance removed from, from it. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're already yeah, distanced true. from it. You right. already have a clear, you're not as emotional because you're not involved mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. We're actually going to talk about that here in a second. So our guest this coming Sunday is Ethan Cross, and he's a psychologist out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And we had him on, obviously, uh, you'll hear the interview here in a few days. And he wrote a book called Chatter, which we'll refer to, which we recorded this episode a few weeks ago, so I hadn't read the book. Now I have. Mm-hmm which was the impetus of this, this discussion. So love the conversation so much with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, man, I got to check out that book because I have always struggled with my inner voice. And, and the, the idea of the book, not to bury the lead, is everybody has an inner voice. Everybody has a voice that, that talks to them. And a lot of times it's negative. It can be negative. So what do you do with that voice? So he terms that negative talk as chatter. And the entire premise of the book is how do you, what are some healthy ways to deal with that chatter? Mm -hmm. I can remember specifically, this is why I struggled in baseball specifically, especially in my older years. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, elementary, like dominated because I didn't think. Think. Like I just went up there and I just let natural ability take over. As I got older though, you start striking out, you start failing. That's to me the best example growing up that I can think of of, where the chatter really affected uh, my yeah, performance, yeah, like yeah. really bad. Yeah. Because instead of being up, being confident <laughs> and knowing, hey, I can do this, I would go up and, and be thinking about, oh, hope I don't strike out here, mm-hmm. hope I don't, you know, screw up. It's a big, it's a big moment in the game. Well, and that that's like Trevor Moad when we had him on, he talked about that, right? And he talked yeah. about his conversations with Russell Wilson and and how. Yeah removing negativity from the dialogue whether it's whether it's physical dialogue or internal dialogue is removing that because it, what did he say it was like four times more likely to happen if you speak negative right th- or if you right. think negative 70, thoughts yes yeah, yeah. times more powerful something, something crazy when you some say it out loud yeah. yeah and so the negative aspect of it is you speak and i think of you know, back when we played, right? You you talk to the greats. Mm-hmm. They've already ran through the game. Played the game in your mind. In already. your head. Yeah. But yeah. 
the great ones that are successful are playing successful plays over and over and over. And so I'm assuming what you're, you know, in this definition that you're giving, that's positive, you know, internal yeah. dialogue, not the chatter, right? Because mm -hmm. I think, again, when you go into a game and you've got questions and you're like, oh, well, what if I miss this? Or what if I miss that block? Or, hey, I don't read this right. Or, you know, it, so, it, always, <laughs> it, it always seems to come to fruition. Yeah. You know, they always said, like, the, the really intelligent players are the ones who struggle the most. Yeah. Like, you ever hear that thought? Yeah. The, because. It's like Sandlot. Yeah. Because you, you weren't thinking uh, you wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you continuously play, you know. Think about the game and over and over you keep on processing. And when you get when you're in that when you get in that mode when you're continuously processing information, information, the negative is bound to show up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's bound to show up. When it, when you just said it, Ben, when you were a kid, you didn't have to think about anything. You were okay, I'm up there. Okay, I can't wait to go swimming yeah. after this game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. gonna, we're gonna <laughs> ice cream after yeah. this, Joyce. Yeah. Home yeah. run's gonna be yeah. awesome. And, yeah. and, <laughs> and that's when you play, that's when you're playing fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what people are trying to get you to. But again, it's, you know, the, it, it, you're going to have negative chatter. I, I don't think there's any way to avoid the negative chatter. I really don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think so. It's just how do you, how do you overcome the negative yeah, chatter? Because you, you can be aware it? of it. Yeah. You, well, you have to become aware of it. And I'm glad you said that because I guess all along my thought has been, how do I eliminate negative mm -hmm. talk? Right. Mm -hmm. And his point is, you don't. It, it's a it's a survival instinct to have that negative chatter. It's a it can be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to eliminate it. It's just how do you manage it? Yeah. Right. How do you let it work for you in scenarios where you're not your life's not being threatened? Because when your life's being threatened, you you yeah. want that instinct. Trust <laughs> right. me. Yeah. Right. Because that's going to help you survive. Right. Yeah. But in a day to day life where it's not life or death, mm -hmm. how do you manage that yeah. that language? So when in the context of our discussion today, when a stressful situation occurs, what are some of the things that you feel physically when you face a stressful situation? What, can you guys rattle off? Some yeah. Things? How do you feel? Like yeah, what, what's your going stomach? Through? Yep. I mean, first thing for me is my stomach. Like it's like, Oh shit, here we, here we go. And it instantly becomes for me. I, I'm just speaking for me instantly it becomes such a, a negative thought. thought. I, I start to figure out, you know, how is it going to directly affect me? Not everybody else. How is this going to directly affect me? And, okay, what are some of the steps? Then I start thinking about steps to avoid. Like, people want, I mean, I know people are like, I don't want to avoid. No, I think it's innate in us to avoid the negative types of things that are occurring right so you you start to figure out okay here's the protocol all right damn this is a this is a negative uh, okay how do i avoid this all right damn i can't avoid this mm -hmm. i gotta run through this and then, yeah. and then it's it, for me it's the process of okay here it is there is no avoidance i right. gotta deal with it mm -hmm. now here is a protocol yeah and that's that's how i start to talk to myself through a negative occurrence. Yeah, I think I think for me, I, I like you a little bit in my stomach, but I, I, I feel it like through like my chest and I feel like like there uh, what's the was there was a Star Wars movie where they're in like a trash compactor and the walls oh, were closing in. Oh, no. so, so, Dude, I can't watch that. <laughs> that's what I can't that's what it. I feel you don't like. Remember I, that? I, I didn't I don't think I watched Star Wars. <sighs> I wasn't a nerd. Like, hey, these, hey, these young bucks these days. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a geek like you two. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> One of the hardest scenes I've ever watched. Yeah, right? I'm, uh, I'm claustrophobic. Yes. And so Even that's watching it. Bobby? Watching it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, they're in this like yeah. trash pit and then there's something in there and like these walls are like, cl yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. But, but that's and the feeling I get. And, and I'm not, like, I wouldn't say no. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like claustrophobic, but I think everybody is to a point, right? You feel a pressure. Where, yeah. Right, yeah. So, so I feel that pressure. It kind of like goes like, take, starts at my shoulders and then goes like inwards, like towards mm. my stomach, right? That's kind of the feeling that I get. And it's funny because uh, in, in my coaching that I, that I do, anytime we're going through some sort of emotion, he always asks me to describe it physically and how mm -hmm. I feel it, which is, is yep. interesting that you, that you asked that. And so, so I feel the, just the heaviness, right. And, and the compression. Um, and then, and then to, to handle it, 
mine is avoidance, right? Mm-hmm. Like you talked about, it's, it's just, if, if there's stress, I'll do something else, right? Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just like not acknowledge it. And it's, and it's like that, like, I've so much to do today. I'm so stressed. I don't know where to start. So I'll just take a nap. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, and I'm not saying I take a nap, but like right. that whole thing, it's like, oh my gosh, I have so much. I'm just going to go. You know what I mean? To make it worse, right? Yeah. That's think that I think that's my natural reaction is when I stress, or it's the other way where I'm super, super invested and I unplug from everything else and whatever that issue is, that that's got to be solved before that feeling comes off of my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, physically, you know, when you feel threatened, you know, your nervous system starts to release hormones, adrenaline, Mm -hmm. cortisol. Mm -hmm. Um, your heart starts pounding faster, your Mm -hmm. muscles start Mm -hmm. tightening, your blood pressure rises, exactly what you guys are describing. Mm And this is all great. That's again, that's the body's natural way to respond to a threat. The problem is, like I said earlier, what about when these threats are less severe and less life or death? Like maybe a work deadline mm-hmm. that you have, yeah. mm-hmm. and you start getting that same response. Because that's how I am. Yeah. Right. In fact, this is funny. I don't know if I've ever admitted this, but I used to. They call it white coat syndrome. Anytime I go to the doctor, not as much anymore as I've learned to deal with it. But especially in my early twenties. My first thought was they're going to find something wrong with me. And so my blood pressure would elevate. Literally, the readings were like off the charts. And I'm just sitting there because I had worked up in my mind so much that something's going to be wrong wrong with me. Right. Mm -hmm. And they they say it's supposedly they say it's fairly common to idiots like me who just you worry yourself so much for a non-threatening situation at all. And it just makes you physically sick, physically ill. And so again, it's, it's, that's a good thing in certain contexts, but that's a bad thing in that context. I just, and so over yeah. time, this has a negative effect on your health. So you guys spoke about when you face a threat and what you do, I ruminate in my mind. Mm-hmm. I just sit in it and just wallow in it and just think worst case scenario, my mind travels a million different directions. How could this possibly be? Any, that's, that's where my mind goes first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's natural. That's situation. natural. Yeah. Uh, that's that's natural though. That's not something that's abnormal. But but I see the danger in it, right? Yeah. Because what it does is it's is it's paralyzing, mm-hmm. right? And then and you're not addressing it, right? And I think what you said, like if it's if it's not a life or death death situation, the problem is 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 we make those situations life, life or, or death, death, right? Because yes. everything in the moment is exactly. the most important thing in the moment. So right. if I've got to get this email out or I've got to get this report done or I've got to get whatever it is it's got to go out or the world's going to fall apart. Yeah. That's the point where you've got to catch yourself. Right. Cause then it turns into literally, here's how mine goes. If, if I'm like behind on something or I've got to get something out and I'm stressing and I don't have everything all together, it's like, okay, then I'm going to lose this client and then I'm going to lose the revenue. And then I'm not going to have, I'm not going to be able to pay my mortgage. And then we're going to have to move out of the house and Mm. I'm not going to be able to feed my kids. And then my wife's going to leave me. And like you go down the line, right? If I don't get this email out. Yeah. And it's like, my mind goes the same. You know what I mean? God damn. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Y'all are crazy. I go from zero zero to darkness. I'm not, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to that extreme. I would say, Mine goes Wait, to, you mean when you have a problem, you don't think about your wife leaving you? <laughs> She's already What's left. wrong with you? She's already gone. <laughs> um, I would say, like, mine goes through frustrations. Like, I get almost angry. Mm. Like, I, I don't go down that line of thinking to say, okay, this is going to happen. Oh, no, anger's on the other side of that, for sure. Is, is oh, for like, sure. <laughs> hey, I'm worried about my wife leaving me, so I'm going to be a total jerk to her. No. Yeah, I don't think to anger's to an issue for me. It's, no. It's way more worry than it is anger for me. No, sure. it's a worry for me, but it's it's it gets to a point to, a, like, sometimes I'll go to that point of, how the hell did I get myself into this shit? Like, mm-hmm. that's how, I, I'll, I'll go there. Mm-hmm. So it goes through this negative or this feeling of, my God, my stomach is pain. I want to avoid. And then I'm like, where, why did I get myself into this? How could I avoid it? this? Or, you know, I could have done something better, this and this and that. And then I go through that angry part of, of course. And then it gets to a point where like, all right, we're going to figure this shit out. And then that's when I start to talk to myself yeah. about, all right, this is, is it that bad? Mm-hmm. How bad is this? Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and you know that yeah, sounds, I mean, you know what I mean. I start to ca- put these things in in these categories to say this shit ain't that bad. This That's level, right. this is a 
That's three. right. That's yeah. when that's when Darren in his talks third person. He's like, yeah, all right, third person. All right, day Aaron. All right, <laughs> I, I know we're out of toilet paper. <laughs> There's a, it's just down the hall. I don't yeah. think anybody's in the house. <laughs> I could just do my waddle over. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I don't have to stress out as much as I yeah, am right that, now. That's a teaser because that's actually a technique we're going to talk about at the end to help with this. Yeah. That I'd never heard of, but apparently yeah. Darren's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. So he's the smartest person I've ever met. No, it's not. You know what? So, it's, it's not, though. Be, well, I, I, we'll I, get to it in a minute. Okay. All right. What I do want to ask you, though, Darren, is, is before you get to the part where you're like, all right, I got this. I'm going to handle this. Do you hear an inner voice? Do you hear a negative inner voice, or is it more Absolutely. Of a feeling? What, what? It's negative. What do you hear whenever you're faced with a scenario? It, that's, first thing is always negative. That voice is negative, and it's just and it's an audible it, voice you're hearing in your head. I'm hearing it in my head, and I'm talking to myself. Like, and again, it's it's you know, how the hell did we get here? Mm -hmm. And that voice is talking to me, like, damn, Darren, why'd you, why did you do this, mm -hmm. or how could you allow this to happen? So that that voice is definitely talking to me um and it sucks man because i'm, I'm drilling myself down like yeah. i'm knocking myself all the way down with that inner voice and trust me I've, I've had so many times where i'm like man try to get out of it try to get out of that 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 negative voice but i think that's the process that you have to go through mm -hmm. i don't think i don't know if maybe people can avoid i can't avoid that i have to go through that negativity negativity yeah. that well, negative voice and then <clears throat> it's like i hit this wall and then i'm defiant Mm -hmm. Yeah, I become defined. How, how does your for, how does your performance affected when you're in that negative mode? It sucks, man. Because yeah. I'm just I'm, I'm debilitated. I can't do anything, mm -hmm. and I have to sit so there. You're and paralyzed. Process. I'm paralyzed, and I have to walk away from situations. Okay. Yeah, and like cool off. So, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little faith faith based here. Is what what I think we need to I need to recognize, and and as of late, I've really tried to be intentional about it. Is that we've got to understand what's actually important. Right. And, and not everything is important. Not everything is life or death, like you said. And I and, and me personally, I think, you know, the enemy, the devil, he puts distractions in our way mm -hmm. to derail us from really kind of what our mission and purpose is. And that's and that's for me. Right. And, and stress is a part of that. Stress is one of the, the tools, I think, that is used to distract us from really, you know, a, a achieving and, and following the purpose that we're created to have. And so for me, there, lately, and, and, I'm, and I'm going through a study book right now, that, uh, a book that Francis Chan did. It's, it's about marriage, but it has nothing to do with marriage, mm -hmm. but it fixes marriage. It's, it's, it's awesome. But point is, is that it, since starting this and recognizing that, and we'll get to actually recognizing that voice is one of the steps, I think, as far as, okay, how do we address that negative chatter, but is recognizing that, okay, hold on, is this really something that deserves the level of attention and stress and impact on my Absolutely. life? Right. Because again, it's, oh man, I got a flat tire. Like it's the end of the world. It's really not. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's 150 bucks and, and I'm not saying 150 bucks is readily available to everybody. I'm not saying that, but you can overcome those things, but we make those into the biggest deal or, you know, work, something's not good at work or you get in a fight with your spouse or, you know, you've got, you've got, you know, issues that you're working through with your kids, whatever it is. But in reality, a lot of those things are just distractions to keep you from achieving really what you were created mm -hmm. to do. And I think recognizing it and not being distracted by it, not being debilitated by it. I think those are things that, you know, we've got to be able to recognize. And so, I, and that's just my, from my faith perspective. And man, it's given me so much peace. It mm -hmm. really, really has. But you know, I mean, let's, in all honesty, when it's something that's really stressful and, and I get it, you, you, I think you get to a point to where, and I think that's where I get to, I finally get to a point to where I'm like, okay, look, this is not that big of a deal, but I have, for me, I, I, I'm not speaking for everyone else. I think it's, a part of being a human to understand that you're going to walk, you're probably going to walk yourself down this negative road, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, is it unhealthy? Yeah, it probably is, but it's, it's, it's well, yeah, I think if, we're, if you let it take off, yeah, if you let it take, but yeah. I, I think initially I won't, don't blame yourself for going through that right. process. Yeah, that's right. right. There shouldn't be guilt associated yeah, don't, with don't, having don't that Don't feel guilty. Chat. I mean, no, give no, yourself totally some agree. grace in the fact that, yeah, you are human. You're going to go down this negative road. It's just when you flatline, what are you going to do then? That's right. And we're going to talk about that here yeah. in a second. Yeah, that's right. right. So anyways, the whole, the whole point about like 
having peace, it, it allows me to be able to react right. in, in, in a way, because think about how we're created is we're created to those stress levels, the adrenaline, right? It's right. fight or flight, right? We need that. Right. We need the negative chatter, like you said, to survive, right? But here's the deal. Is that stress adrenaline, adrenaline going to help you craft a better email? Is it going to help you? Is it going to help you, uh, you know, be fix the fight that you're in your wife with your wife or your husband? Is it going to do any of those things? Mm -hmm. So to me, like the level of peace and just recognizing, okay, Hey, look, hold on. Let's put this in perspective in the big picture right. in, in three months from now, am I going to, is this really going to matter? Right. Like, and, and it's speaking of peace three months from now, there's going to be a grand opening up in Durant, Oklahoma for a brand new expansion for Choctaw Casino and Resorts. <laughs> he gets that, me every time. I, <laughs> no I, I, I know he's going to do it, and, and yet it still comes out of nowhere every single time. <laughs> go so, ahead, Durant, Oklahoma. Go with that so, Choctaw. Yeah. So here's the thing. So we're talking about negative chatter. We're talking about all these things. A lot of, a lot of times that negative chatter is that we don't deserve something. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve the opportunity to enjoy life. And I'm telling you, that's the voice you need to ignore because you do deserve it. Everybody deserves a break. And it's literally less than an hour and a half from downtown Dallas. You go up to Durant, Oklahoma. There is so much to do. It's literally Vegas in our backyard. Yes. The new pool, the new resort, the new casino, the amount of, of uh, artists that are coming, performers that are coming, comedians, country artists, classic rock. Uh, I mean... I don't know if there's any rap. Is R and B yeah. coming, man? R and B, we're, we're getting some. R and B, but man, look, man. if Lil Wayne's not it's, there, I'm not going. It's, <laughs> it literally, it, it's, it is such, it is such a relief from the daily stress that we we have in our head, and just right. to go and just sometimes an escape's good. Escape is not always a healthy way to deal yeah. with problems, but sometimes that is, that escapes give gives us the recovery that we need, and not only that, in the month of July. Choctaw is giving away over $1.4 million. They've got a $700,000 giveaway and then a $750,000 giveaway, mm. and they're giving away a Corvette. So you go up, play with your member's card, you get entered to win. It is, guys, it is right there, and when you get up there and you get your eyes on it, you will be blown away to say, yep. this has been here the entire time. I cannot believe well, it. The I've best casinos out. In the country. The best casino, D. Oh, yes. I'm yes. talking about just, just just walking on the floor of the casino was awesome. The event center. You said it earlier, Tyler. The pool. Uh, the people. Just, great. just a great time. And I can't wait till great the football people. season comes. Yeah, oh, Because buddy. when the season comes, buddy, yeah, buddy. we're going to be up there doing some events at, at yeah. Choctaw. Oh, we're going to have yeah. a great time this yeah. fall. And at the time of this recording, it'll be tomorrow. We're actually going to get to go see the new expansion yeah. in person for the first time. Yes. So really excited to see that. And we'll, yeah. uh, we'll document that or whatever. But... Um, yeah, head up to Durant, Oklahoma, Choctaw Casino. Take uh, take these guys' money, uh, <laughs> Choctaw. But what we were talking about before, and Darren, you were you were starting to get into this, and so to reset, you have a negative situation that occurs, whether it's you know uh, work stress or home stress or kids, whatever, and the negative chatter starts. What's the next step? How do you pull yourself? So you've had your time to to you know sit there in the negativity. What's then the next step? How do you pull yourself out of that? I know the answer that you're going to say, and I want to steal it. But well, I want to know. Yeah, well, no, I, <laughs> go ahead and say it. I want to know what you go. would yeah. do typically. How would you? How would you get yourself? Out I of think. That? I think one of the, one of the things personally that, in order to get out of that, I'm not saying I'm successful all the time, mm -hmm. is I've got to just stop, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I can't just continue down that path, right? That snowball of just stress and, mm -hmm. and issues and and um, adrenaline and negativity and all those things. For me, I've got to stop and I've got to realize, okay, hold on. What are the consequences of this stressful situation or this negative situation? Are they really that important, right? Is it really going to impact my life? And then once you, once you are there and most of the time you're like, okay, three weeks from now, I will never think about this again. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how can I find a solution or what is the best plan of attack? Or is there a plan of attack? Or do I just let it go? Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. really, for me, that's, that's what has been probably the best 
best action items that I could take when I get into that yeah, scenario. Yeah. So it sounds like you just try to gain some perspective. Yes. Like, is yeah. this really that big of a deal in the grand yeah. scheme of things? Yes. Is this going to affect me long term? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Darren, it it you, depends. If it's really a, a, situ- a negative situation where I got to deal with that, there are times, like, again, yeah, and, and I'll set it that, you know, I'll go through, I'll walk myself down this road and even to the points where I have to vent. I have to vent. Maybe not to someone else, but I, alone, I will go in a room or I'll go for a walk and I'll vent. And it's the best thing for me mm. because it allows me to put things in perspective mm-hmm. and then it allows that positive voice time to sit there and go pick it apart, pick all the negative things apart that, that I just dealt with. But I can't do it. I can't get this done around people. Yeah. So it's you, so be, you look from within. You, I look, you turn inward. Yes, mm-hmm. because the more people that are around, it's not – I can't. I, do you I can't think that focus comes from? on. Why do you think you turn inward? You don't seek out help necessarily. Why do? You, where do you think that? Comes I think from? it comes from the, my upbringing in a lot of in a lot of mm-hmm. ways. Where I've, you know, my brothers and sisters were older than me. I was the youngest. I was in situations sometimes where I had to just deal with things, mm-hmm. and there was no one to run to to say, "Hey, this is what's going to happen." No, it was like, "Hey, dude, yeah, this is on you. Mm-hmm. You figure it out." And my mother has always been very independent as well. To let us get be with our thoughts. Hey, you need to go calm down. You need to go sit yeah. and think about this. Yeah, and the alternate, I think we all have those friends yeah. that they want to talk about every, every single one of the problems. Thing. Yes. And they talk to multiple people yes. about the problem. And if if you don't have one of those friends, you're probably that friend. Yeah, you are. Yeah. So, and, and, there, and if that's how you handle it, that's one fine. One out of three people is that person. So which one of us is that person? <laughs> <laughs> you talk he's talking he's talking <laughs> but let me let me ask you guys this um do you guys ever as an outlet you talk about venting physically venting yes what and do how do you handle that venting? like we have so much we have i think we're in in a culture that like frowns on on anger and aggressiveness right. and physical like uh, release of you know of that anger we just we just bottle it up right mm-hmm. right and, and I just I feel like it's one of those things that you know and the only reason I bring this up is uh, I was reading it in a book uh, that I just finished recently and he takes you know the the trash cans that you put out on the curb yeah. he goes they're indestructible and he takes oh, yeah. a bat to it and that's, that's like his venting and probably. and how healthy that could be and I don't I, when I get really 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 mm-hmm. mad like I've never punched a wall. I've never done it, I, I, but I want to sometimes, yeah. right? Like, yeah. and, and when I get really stressed, that's like kind of my first reaction is like, I'll ball my fists up and I'm getting ready to punch man. something. So, hey. And I just wonder how, you two need if, if we could. No, Jesus. man. No, no, but I think, I think, I think that's healthy. We don't have any outlets like no, that. No, and that's why I say I either go for a walk, like get a workout in when you're yeah. frustrated. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people no, don't, well, people don't yeah. need to experience your shit. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need to be bringing, I don't need to bring my kids and my wife into something that I need to be dealing with. Yeah. And I can easily deal with it by going for a walk by myself. Hey, babe, I'm going, I need to go, I need to walk this off. Then are you able but, to talk to, talk to Tiffany after that? After the about fact, it? After I've calmed yeah. down and yeah. after I've dealt with it and after that positive voice. But I can't, I can't have these conversations with possibly my wife because i have to go through it first yeah let me get through it yeah let me figure out what it is because if not i'm going to be starting venting to her yeah and then it's going to be an uh, an argument going back and forth man yeah. deal with your like it's, people it, always say deal with your own bullshit first yeah, yeah. It's, and then come out of it yeah, yeah. now there's a lot of wisdom in that yeah. it's it's For funny sure. when mostly when i was playing if if tiff and i would ever get into some sort of an argument she would know, like, there's a point, okay, he's not really making sense right now. Right. Like, because, and that's how I am when I argue when it's like fresh and I haven't processed yeah. it. I don't, I don't make much sense, right? <laughs> Same way. She'll literally, we've been, I mean, I'd say probably a dozen times while I was playing, we'll be mid argument. She goes, just about? go, just go work out. We'll finish it. We'll finish it after you work out. Because I'll literally, I'll spend an hour and a half and I'll work out and I'll just go through it in my head. I'll get aggression wow. out. And, and literally, I'll come back, and it's typically like, all right, you're right. I was, I was on some bullshit. 
the same yeah. thing, man. Yeah. I it's mean, so true. Yeah, and what's brilliant about that is that's exactly what he talks about in the book is mm. that's a form of stepping away from the problem. You're mm-hmm. removing yourself from the emotion, from being down in there <laughs> where it's just all around you. You can't, you're, you're taking a 10,000 foot view if you've yeah. ever heard that, that phrase. It's like an offensive coordinator who sits in the booth, right? They sit up in the booth so they can see the entire field. They can right. see the entire play. Mm-hmm. They can make better decisions up there in the booth. Mm-hmm. Whereas players down in the field, you're in the, you're in the chaos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it sounds like those are, those are a couple of ways. And another thing that's funny that he talks about in the book that you guys were describing was venting to other people. Actually, we think it helps. No. It actually doesn't help no. because typically the person on the other side, they're being nice. They're yeah. letting you, you know, vent. or they're upset or they're back. Look, you said it. The fresher it is, mm-hmm. and you're having this conversation with a loved one, they may not feel the same way you feel about it. Mm-hmm. And, they, and you may not want to hear advice. Yeah. And they may be wanting to give you advice. Like, mm-hmm. those are the times where, like, hey, man, it's okay sometimes to go into a room yeah. and just motherfuck everything. <laughs> right? It's All okay. those lace pillows on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those, in the those 32 <laughs> throw pillows. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Both you two react. I don't, I don't feel like that. I don't feel that desire ever to yeah. hit something. I, I just don't, I can't think of a time recently where I got that angry. Yeah. So what's going to happen, Ben, is it's going to boil up and you're going to shoot up our office. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Cause it's been so suppressed for so long. No, I, I, <laughs> just tell me when you're coming. I'm no, not again, be my, my personality is not one to get angry. Yeah. It's to worry. It's to yeah. fear. It's yeah. to stress. It's not mm. one to get angry and, and le- maybe. But I should why? But angry. why? But why? I Why think it's just is that personality? That, I don't know. Yeah. I, I I've never I've never been default angry. I've always been default worry. Mm. If that makes sense. Huh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. No, so it does. so if a scenario comes up that's upsetting, mm-hmm. I don't get angry at the uh, at the scenario. I usually just get worried about the scenario. Yeah, and your point though too about the whole venting is like you said, we sometimes venting you just want to get it out. Yeah. So you don't necessarily want advice back. So then we get angry at someone else for giving an answer when that's really what we've prompted, prompted them to do exactly. is to give us a response. If somebody right. comes to me, right. And, and I think part of this is you, when you do, and when you're clear headed, I think it is healthy to have a conversation with someone else because they have a different perspective yeah. of the issue and likely they're removed from it. They're distanced from it. So they can give sound advice most of the time. If mm-hmm. it's somebody you trust and someone, you know, right. But when you go in that mode, you don't want to hear anything. You don't want to hear anything, man. Because it's really hard to no. hear the truth when it doesn't align with what's in your head. At and that how I grew up, man, sometimes when you get to that point where you're dealing with so much frustration and emotions and all, and then you have your boys around and mm-hmm. you don't take that time to isolate yourself, they'll gas your ass up. They will. Oh, yeah. they 100%. will gas you up. IQ drops dramatically when you're with your boys. Yes. Separate you. If you're listening, go separate yourself. Yeah. yeah. And take a walk <laughs> <laughs> and then come back. You'll be a totally different person hey, after that walk. Hey, put on some rollerblades, yeah. go for a skate. You can't <laughs> not be in a better mood with rollerblades on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tyler, you touched on it. It's so fascinating to me that my advice is pure gold on point when it's Darren's problem. Yeah. Yes. I, I yeah. can give Darren all the advice in the world yeah. when it's his issue. Yeah. But when it's my own problem, for yeah. whatever reason, I'm the dumbest person in the world. Yeah. And I all of a sudden I can't see it. Yeah. I'm just in my own stuff. Yeah. Just so then how do we do that? How do we how can we how can we act? And I think he talks about it in the book is how do we say, okay, I've got this issue how can I give third party advice? Mm-hmm. How can I give advice as if I was giving a friend yep. advice and not yep. myself being so deeply intertwined with whatever the issue is? Yeah. Yeah. Three of the techniques he talks about, you guys actually mentioned one that I'm not sure if I forget if you mentioned or not, is just going for a walk or doing physical activity. Yeah. I, he probably said that. I don't remember. Uh, but that's a great one. I love doing that. I yeah. love, you know, because the feelings I have after a workout, I mean, I'm totally on top different. of the world, yeah. totally different. Yep. And it just removes me from that scenario. You get to step away. Yep. But Saren, Darren, something fascinating that came up in the discussion with Ethan that you do, I had literally never heard this. Mm-hmm. And you acted like, well, what do you mean you never heard that? I do this all the time. And that's referring to yourself in the third person. Yeah. So when I'm faced with an issue, it's, man, uh, you know, I can do this. I can get through this. But what do you do, Darren, in a very similar scenario, which was which was fascinating to me? Uh, I, again, go through all that situation. I have to flatline. Like, 
I have to get to that point where, okay, now it's, you know, you're going to have to face this and you're going to have to do this. Mm -hmm. You're going to do something about it. So that's when I think my voice really comes in to say, (laughs) and I talk to myself in, in, in any stressful situation in this like I'm saying my name, it's either Darren or it's Woody, it's yeah, hey, Woody, it's De- Aaron, it's whatever. Big but I'm referring D. to myself as, "Hey man, you, Darren, you need to get, you need to pick mm-hmm. your shit up now." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, did this happened now. De- you know, now I you had, need yeah. to fix it. I had never heard that in my life. Really, anybody saying I talk to myself in the third person? I've yeah, never I, heard even that. during no, games. Heard that you've heard that, but it was a totally different. Well, like, no, it was what a hey, what a psychopath. No, well, and that's like, what, you know exactly. And that's you know what, what we talk yeah. about in the yeah. episode it, when somebody verbalizes it yeah. and speaks it out loud. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, uh, Floyd Mayweather. I got the fastest hands in the world. That's, that's an arrogant that's prick. Arrogant. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. what Ethan's talking about, and you'll hear in the episode, and you'll read in the book, is when you do it internally, uh-huh. it's mm-hmm. as if a friend. Because think about the last challenge you. Tyler, you just picked up CrossFit. Mm-hmm. The The big thing about CrossFit is a community. So yeah, I'm right. guessing friends in the class, mm-hmm. hey, Tyler, pick it up. Pick up the bar. Let's yeah. go. Come yeah. on, Tyler. Get yeah. get going. Yeah. And what does that do to you? That motivates you. That yep. picks you up. Yeah. You're yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Whereas maybe if you're working out by yourself, you're saying, man, I got I to gotta pick up this bar. I got to yeah. go. Yeah. And, and it's just and a it, different and where mentality. Does it, where does it tend, right? Yeah. Oh, when I you can rest a little bit longer. It's just, or it's, ah, it's, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. Oh, no, that's too heavy. Yeah. yeah I did, I've, I did. I've done enough. Yeah. But, but if, but when if you can flip it and yeah. say, hey, Tyler, pick up this bar or Ben, yeah. pick up this bar. Yeah. And I really, I, I've done it. In, in fact, I have a funny story over the weekend. You're talking to yourself. Yeah. I actually did this. <laughs> this, did this exact thing. <laughs> So, where were you? I, I'm, in the I'm garage. About to take it somewhere totally different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben. You can I'm do like, this. You can get it. <laughs> we'll just breathe. One minute. Yo. Hey, one, one more minute. minute. Guys, Ten seconds. We, we, yeah. we don't condone premarital sex on the Darren Woods show. We have a young man who's not married uh, running our switcher oh, okay. today. Yeah, you're right. Quit you talking about sexual intercourse <laughs> around it, young ears. Did you go a minute and two seconds? <laughs> A minute and three. Give me some credit. So last week, so Tyler, you and I talked on last roundtable. Yeah. We remember what we said. I wonder what it'd be like if we left the office at two thirty one day, shut everything off, yeah. completely forgot it. That's got to be healthy for you, right? Yeah. It has to be. Well, guess what? It is. I, it is. I can <laughs> confirm it's very healthy for you. So yeah. last week, last Thursday, my wife and I did a staycation mm-hmm. with our two boys, which that was the. Looking back now, a little, <laughs> little wrinkle in that. <laughs> Looking back now, in hindsight, that was a mistake to to call it a staycation with your four year old and your one year old. Right. So we decided we're gonna go over to the Gaylord over in where is that Grapevine? Grapevine, yeah. yep. And they've got a water park and massive, massive yeah, hotel. If you're awesome, not familiar yeah. with it, it's, if you're in the Dallas awesome. Fort Worth area, if you're not, it's it's an awesome hotel resort type experience and. So we go over not there. Not a sponsor, by the way. No, not, a sponsor. not a sponsor. Not, not a sponsor. Baby. We should have gone to Chalk Talk. Should have took it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, so we go over there. We do the water park. We have a great time. Yeah. It's awesome. And like I said, mm-hmm. I, I didn't check my computer, my email once. I just completely checked out. And it was mm-hmm. great. It was the first afternoon I can remember doing that during the middle of the week. Yeah. And I don't know how long. So anyway, awesome time. Well, Back up a little bit. My son, my second son, was born in February 2020. And so this was right before all the lockdowns went mm-hmm. down. So basically the first nine months of his life, we didn't leave the house. He right. didn't know any other people. He didn't sleep anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So he got super used to being home. And he's mm-hmm. the world's easiest baby at home. Like mm-hmm. literally, it's 7 p.m. We go lay him in his crib. We believe the ha- we leave the room. He's done. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, we don't have to rock him. Wow. In fact, he doesn't want to be rocked to sleep. Yeah. Like he gets angry if you try to rock him. Mm-hmm. It's actually kind of sad, but. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> no, no, man. So yeah. easiest baby in the world when right. we're at home. Mm-hmm. We're on the road, a little bit different, different mm-hmm. story. So we're in the hotel. It's seven o'clock. We're thinking, okay, so Cooper and I leave the room. We're going to leave Whitney in the room to. to quiet. You know, quiet. quiet yeah. No distractions. The problem is his crib is right next to the to the big bed. Right. Oh. So he sees us and everything. So he screams for an hour and a half, two hours, literally. Won't go to sleep. Mm. No matter what we do, he will not go down. So finally get him to sleep. It's 930 that night. Finally get him to sleep. This is Thursday night. Well, midnight rolls around or 1230. He wakes up again and starts screaming again. Mm. And he's just going 
crazy. We're doing everything. We're rocking them. We're trying to feed. Like, we're right. doing everything we can think of. The freaking next door neighbors in the hotel are bang, banging, banging on the, wall. on the walls. Wow. Yeah. As if we didn't know our kid was I was going to yeah. say, yeah. what? Yeah. That's <laughs> <seems> like, <laughs> never had kids in their yeah. lives. Yeah. Yeah. people they, like they that. They either man. didn't have kids or sleep deprivation. Right. I have some grace in that. I, I get it. No, it's, I don't. <laughs> no. Kiss my ass. It's like, it's like when people get pissed off. On a on plane, plane, yeah. When kids yeah. are like yeah, upset, yeah, uncomfortable, yeah. it's like you th- you don't think that I know my baby's <laughs> upset, and exactly. like, you don't think that I'm stressed yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a little I, more zen approach to it, so you guys, yeah, y'all punch we're the angry, walls. We're, yeah. we're, yeah. we're in a aggression, we're in aggression <laughs> mode right now. <laughs> y'all would have knocked on the next door and, and yeah. got him. So anyway, it turns out one thirty, he's still screaming. We're like, all right, let's pack it up. We're going home. This is not worth it. So literally at one thirty in the morning, oh, how was it when you got home? Up and we. Did he sleep home? in the car? No, didn't sleep in the car. Okay. We get home. Guess what happens? Out. Lay him down in his crib. Gone. Out. 2.30 in the morning, he's out. There and then didn't wake up until there 9. There your staycation. Huh? So there goes my staycation. So I say all that to say, <laughs> yeah. this was after I'd read the book. I'm yeah. literally talking to myself in third person. Like, yeah. Ben, it's 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. I'm supposed to be sleeping. Yeah. And it's like, Ben, you got this. It's all good. Just calm down. Yeah. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. You're going to get to back to sleep soon. And I was doing this. I, and it really and how did how much did help. that help with Wit, really, too? Because I'm sure she was stressing, She too. was stressed, but it yeah. really did calm. It, well, how it helped her is the way that I treated her. That's yes. right. Yes. Yeah. Instead of being yeah. super pissy and yeah. arguing, and now because I together. was calm yeah. and mm-hmm. calming myself down, it allowed me to treat her with much more respect yeah. Yeah. in that scenario. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. When it would have been easy just to anything she said, me jump on her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And it, it was it was crazy because I had gotten instant benefit from this concept that I just learned about. Mm. Yeah. And so it was really interesting, Darren, to and in fact Ethan referenced this, I believe. I forget if it was on air or off air. That's part of what made you such a great player in your playing days was you had this ability to remove yourself from the stress of the game. Right. Or pregame. Right. And you had this ability to talk to yourself in third person and encourage yourself. In third I, I think it, yeah, exactly. But it's more removing yourself from the emotions. Yeah. Like at some point figuring it out and going, okay, I got to take the emotions out yeah. of this. Yeah. Right. And make it, and, I, and I'll give you an example. One of the things that Mike Zimmer used to always give me credit about was when I was playing is during the game, when the game got emotional, the fourth quarter or whatnot, as a safety when you come off to the sideline, the defense coordinator, you know, your, your defense coordinator is usually asking questions. What are you seeing? Mm-hmm. What are you seeing out there, right? And he'd always tell me, he's like, man, what, I could always go to you because you take the emotions totally out of it and you're just giving me feedback. Mm. And that's, you know, I never thought about it that much, but he would always come up, hey, man, what are you seeing? You know, what's, what's happening out there, blah, blah, blah. And I can just tell them, hey, well, this is what's happening, blah, blah. I said, oh, God damn it. The fuck? Yeah. They're, they're slinging he's, balls all over the place. so fast. <laughs> I can't get you off. <laughs> you want but, me to stop the run and cover the fan? <laughs> Whoa. Well, yeah. But, uh, it, well, yeah. but it's a, again, I'm no different than anybody else. I think I probably figured it out, like, at some point, I'm going to walk my, I'm going to deal with the negatives. I'm going to flatline at some point. Where it's going to be like, okay, it's either, you know, you're either going to run run away from this problem or you're going to deal with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And once you decide to deal with it, then that's when that voice comes up. And it well, says, and I think what it does, right, is, is you said it, is you remove the emotion. It's now not a, an emotional reaction. You apply logic to it. Yes. Because now you can step out. You can look at it from, from an objective perspective. And you can say, all right, what's the best, what's the best route here? you know, that I can come up with personally, as opposed to just reacting, Mm -hmm. right? And reacting a lot of times gets us in trouble, especially, you know, in relationships. Yeah, you're so true. That is so true. Yeah, Yeah, so as as we wrap up, you know, the the three things that he was talking about, and we talked about, sorry, number one, shift focus from the short term to the long term. So, Mm -hmm. Tyler, as you mentioned, what's going to be important to me three weeks from now? Is this same issue going to be a problem three weeks from now? Uh, Maybe you're going on a beach vacation and you're currently in the middle of a workout. Think about that beach vacation. Think about what you're working for yeah. to overcome that short-term suffering. Mm-hmm. Number two, he says, uh, speaking yourself in third person, which mm-hmm. we just we just talked about. And then number three, we didn't mention, I actually did this just this morning, in fact, is write down the issue or problem on a piece of paper, then list all the potential solutions. Mm-hmm. So, again, I'm really trying – because this is something I've – You'd su- partially struggled. do that anyway. Yeah. Well, no, not not in this context, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. 
So for 33 years, I've struggled with this. So these are things that I'm really trying to apply. And it, it, it's amazing the instant benefits. Mm. I, I had an issue. I wrote down the problem and I said, all right, what are all the things that I can do? And then just to, to visually to see this? it, yes. right? How much yeah. clarity yeah. that, that it did, provides. It, it distanced me from the problem because I was actually writing it out of my head yeah. instead of just letting it bounce around yeah. in my head for yeah. the next 20 minutes. I actually wrote it out of my head onto paper yeah. and now I can see it in front of me. Yeah. And it's and it's right there. Yeah. And I was able to think through scenarios and think logically, remove myself from the problem. Yeah. So I've already tried to, I guess, really, I guess I've yep. done all three of these things, but mm-hmm. two of them very recently. And I can't tell you the, the how much it's already helped and changed my perspective. Yeah. Whenever I'm fit. Now, am I going to be perfect? No. Am, am I going to slip back song. into absolutely negative chatter yeah. and let it run off further than it? Absolutely. It's mm-hmm. going to happen again. But I love books like this. I love how science and people are researching things like this to help us mm-hmm. to be able to, because that's this right. is going to be help. This is going to make an impact on my 80 year old self. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If I can learn to de-stress and de-escalate these scenarios yeah. now in my young 30s. And I think on the negative chatter aspect, and I, and I shared this back, gosh, a while ago. Um, there's another book that talks about internal dialogue. It's from a, a former Navy SEAL. His name's Tom Shea. Uh, it's called Unbroken. And he does like these ultra races where they, you know, run a hundred miles, bike 300 miles, Mm -hmm. kayak. It's crazy. Right. But what, one of the things that he talks about a lot is you always have that internal dialogue, that chatter. And, and one of the things that that you need to train yourself to do is just recognize what that is. Mm -hmm. Right. Because so often it's just kind of noise and you don't realize the impact and influence that negative voice has on you until you solo it out and you focus on that voice. And what is it actually saying? Is that voice in my head telling me something that's going to help me or is it going to hurt me? Mm -hmm. And, and one of the things that he talks about in the book is just to notice it is, is, is the push up challenge. Mm-hmm. And it's literally for three weeks straight. For week one, you do 10 push ups right before you get in bed at night, and 10 push ups when you get out of bed at night. And it's not, a, it's not a matter of how hard it is or get in shape. It's what is that voice when you're tired at the end of the day that's telling you you can't do those push ups right. before you get in bed? <clears throat> Notice that voice. And then when you get out of bed, oh, I've got to move on to this, or I got to get the coffee going, or I got to get the kids up, or I got whatever it is. Listen to that voice. It's literally less than 30 seconds to do 10 push-ups. Mm. But why, why that voice in your head tell you you should not do it? And then the next week is, is 20, and then the next week is, is 30 push-ups. But if you do not get, if you, if you ever break it, then you got to start over yeah. and just see how far you can go because it, it's it's something that to recognize that then you can now in everyday life and parenting and work or relationships whatever it is then you can actually notice yeah. that negative chatter and then you can say okay hold on I'm gonna, I hear it and then I'm gonna either shift it to positive talk positive reinforcement or I'm just gonna ignore it and I'm gonna say uh uh-uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna listen to you right, right. I love that you know man it. that's so true I just. Mm. <laughs> I'm listening to you, and I'm like, man, there's so many ways that you can go about this. I think one of the things that I've always, I'm, I'm coming around to is, you know, we make so many mistakes, and we're, there's so much outside negativity that's coming our way, right? And it happens all the time. And I, and I want to wrap up on this, but you know, let's not forget to love ourselves, man. Yeah, like we got to fall back in love with ourselves. And there's a lot of people who who aren't in love or don't you know, are upset with themselves for certain things. We're not giving ourselves enough grace. You know, fall back in love with yourself and understand that you're going to go through negative things. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a part of it. But when you bounce back, you got to be talking to yourself in such a positive, because there's so much negative that's coming your way, start reinforcing yourself with the positive of how much you actually love yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going through this, but damn, man, you're a good dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, morally, you're, you're strong. you you, you want the best for others. You're serving others. You're giving. Like, you, you need to talk to yourself in that way. Because if you don't, man, it's always going to be like, I'm not good enough. Yeah. That's not. That's like, not healthy. With this, with this, well, with our conversations that we're having, man, you know, and, and how we're approaching these things. And we're just three dudes having these conversations. But I'm going to sit here and tell you, man, a lot of our conversations that we're having it all stems back to who we are and how much we really respect ourselves. We have to start as men 
If we don't respect ourselves, how can we outwardly, outwardly respect other people? Mm -hmm. It starts with us. Fall back in love with yourself. Just look in the mirror sometimes. Fall back in love with yourself and just say, hey, look, there, this is, I'm going to build off this foundation. Mm -hmm. to, to close us out, a couple, couple of challenges here. Number one, if Darren calls me and starts that negative chatter and starts bitching about a problem, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you to shut up. You tell and, me to shut up. <laughs> You're going to tell no, me. We're, no, but seriously, let's hold each other accountable on this. Tyler, same thing. Yeah. If I start bitching about a problem, hold me accountable to this. Hey, say, that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. mm. Think about those techniques. Remove yourself from the problem because yeah. venting is not helpful. The other thing, the other challenge for you two, read the book before next week. Okay. Or listen to the book before yeah. next week. So it's, it. it's, it's not long. So, yeah. okay. Okay. Ethan Cross, he's this next, uh, next Sunday's episode. It was an awesome episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. Go check out his book, Chatter. Uh, it's not far-fetched to say it, real, it will change your perspective. Yeah. It will change your life. So yeah. see right. you guys uh, on Friday.